How is it going everyone? My name is Zander Yevitz, also known as Alexander, and today I'll be continuing on playthrough of a game called Grim Dawn on hardcore difficulty with veteran included. So as you can see I have actually named this playthrough with digit 1.1 as well as this current stream with 1.2 simply because I have lost my previous character on hardcore and I actually died pretty hilariously meaning that I was managed to kill have managed to kill final boss at Ashes of Melmoot DLC but died by running behind him to search for some chests which I thought was there which I thought was located on Eater Ground so pretty much the plan for me right now is to get as quickly as possible to the same place where I have been and what I mean by as quickly as possible is I will not clear all of the location on 100% Meaning open up every territory, I will just complete only secondary as well as main quests and also will restore shrines along the way. It is a great, for, uh, in my opinion, a great time saver. However, I do not recommend you to do it if you have just picked up the game and plan to play it from and plan to do sort of a fresh start. So, but I recommend actually for you to fully explore all your surroundings rather than try to rush to a certain point like I am doing right now. And also, the thing is, I have removed from scratch words simply due to the fact that I already have some of the recipes. Not all of them, but some, as, as well as some rare materials and crafting materials, rare components and crafting materials. So, for me, it just doesn't make any sense to call this playthrough once again from scratch. If you know what I mean. So, how, however, most of my current gear, as well as my future gear, will be once again self-found. I do not have any legendaries, which are uh, which are lying and waiting for me just to pick pick them up and wear it. I only, I believe, I only have. I can later show to you my common stash. I only have with me right now. Well, in my common stash armor, but it requires level 72 in order for me to wear it. So that's the whole gist of it. Right now I am currently at the Tyrant's Hold territory, trying to complete the quest the Global Tyrant. Also doing a couple of mistakes such as not killing healer first and focusing them all at the same time. And by the way, if you'd like to know more what happened in detail to my previous character, you can check it by watching video on demand on YouTube or on my YouTube channel on my YouTube channel or on Twitch. The links on them will be under the description on Twitch uh, on Twitch page. So if you, if you would like to check it out later, you can definitely do it. But up till this point, let's continue on with the quick resolution of this quest. 
Well, also since I'm moving this quickly, I could miss some of the hidden chests along the way and or treasure troves. But that's actually one thing I am um, kind of accepted as a sacrifice. If you play in a quick fashion, you, you would have to accept that not all of the nuke and cranny of the map can be fully explored. But you have to keep in mind the thing that your time will be saved by the hours. If not by the dozens of hours while doing so. At least up until the point where you were stuck or where you have died on hardcore. And also right now, you see, I'm again making a mistake by killing those two yellow mobs, since what I could be doing better right now is to just run for the lore node and then run back to the entrance of this castle. Alright, so that's done. Let's run back to the entrance. I am still playing on hardcore difficulty with veteran included, so same as before, same I will be playing making same class. I have no problems with playing that knight. This class is tanky and can deal quite a lot of damage, so the class wasn't a problem. My curi my curiosity was the problem. From now on I am definitely Aware that not every ethereal grounds contains on it hidden treasures. The one thing though that I will not be missing is fighting with elites or bosses. So I need to run, as I remember, to the left and then straight up, then to the right. Like, it's even okay if I will be missing some of the groups of mobs. Since, well, it's kind of a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. Good thing is that the level difference between you and monsters will make it so you will get from them more experience for sure the other bad thing is that the other uh, the bad thing however is that you will not be as strong as you could be if you have tried to quote unquote full clear every location along the way but that's once again a thing you have to sacrifice or the quick play style. Nevertheless, quick play style doesn't mean it's not informative, so from time to time I will, I will be giving some important tips how you can save up perhaps some time or resources by doing certain things in specific order, so stay tuned for that. Right now I'm approaching towards the boss of this location. Also, this is my second stream for today. If you'd like to check first stream, which is marked with digits part 1.1, you can do it on my video on demand channel on Twitch or you can later on at your own leisure watch it on youtube at my channel as well it has already been uploaded also you need to uh, be aware of one fact when you try to quickly clear 
location is that quickly does not mean that you will have to ignore all the safety option and rush zealously into the fray. You will still have you will still have to be aware of your surroundings, who are you fighting with, and whom you can, in this case, ignore, or, or who you will have to, with whom you will have to dispatch as soon as possible. So keep that in mind when you try to apply the same method. All right, so boss is actually already aggro towards me. Let's not stand in his spot. And once again, let's apply hit and run techniques. Also, when it comes to skill leveling as well as the ocean leveling, nothing has changed from my previous experience. I will still be utilizing, and I am utilizing, spammable force wave as well as a two hander. And when it comes to attribute points, all in the physique. Also, when it comes to devotions, currently I am working... Well, I will start leveling Kraken Constellation. I already have managed to level Ghoul Constellation. And put Brocken Ghoul onto... Field Commander. Field Command, I'm sorry. Le managed to level Scholar's Light Constellation just for green knots in order to open Kraken Constellation and also manage to level Yield Constellation once again just to unlock the ability to start expanding on Kraken Constellation and that's basically it alright so the boss of this location is down let's actually So as soon as I will dispatch of this elite, I'll actually not run there, but try to TP there. And once again, just to save some time. Even though I have extra movement speed, it's faster if you can just TP to a certain location. Alright, so already done with those quest line. So this time... Let me actually head towards Steps of Torment? Question mark. Now, first we'll head to Homestead. And here I will craft dynamite. And before Steps of Torment I'll actually oops, click on the wrong button. Before Steps of Torment, I will actually do the first... Um, do the first two parts of Hidden Quest questline. To me, it's an obligatory quest to do in every difficulty, since at the end it will give you an extra skill point on all of the difficulties, so you can count three difficulties, three extra skill points. As well as, well, perhaps some of the good loot and experience. So, if you have a chance and you know where to run, in my opinion, you should not ignore it. Alright, so... Right here, try to instantly go and dispatch those crawlers who are shooting you from a distance. Since, in my experience, they are the ones that are dealing most damage, not the melee guys. And funny enough, this tactic also applies towards your most encounters with a group of mobs. Unless you will find some very hard hitting one, hard hitting melee mobs, and not so tough range. In this case, you can change your tactics right on the fly. And I also have picked up. It seems like a better, well, better, quote unquote, weapon. However, it gives bonuses towards blade arc, not towards. Force wave, which is unfortunate, but let's continue. All 
Alright, so far I can give you a tip when you want to come through this location. Uh, do make sure that your resistance is towards poison as well as towards piercing is on the higher side of things since majority of those enemies actually dealing poison as well as peer poison piercing as well as some physical damage but for me it's like poison and piercing are on the top of the list Alright, so kill this elite. I believe we only left with the boss of this location. Let me actually try to clear the right corner of this map since I know that there are enemies nearby. And let's actually, well, the thing is that due to the force wave hitbox, it's kind of difficult from time to time to efficiently clear at the same time as as long as boss as long as hitting the boss because you can see i am fighting on an uneven ground meaning that some ground is actually higher some of it is lower so i am trying to hit them to apply internal trauma on all of the targets on as much targets let's say as i can but sometimes it doesn't work as I expect it to be. Also do keep in mind that this boss applies not only physical, not only deals physical damage as well as acid damage. He can also apply resistance reduction to your overall defense. So trying to face tank it without some serious defensive abilities to me is kind of a no-go you are willing to try it at your own risk all right so managed to clear him this time i will teleport towards broken hills for the second part of this quest line which is which is consistent of Killing the winged demon called Solael, which deals chaos and vitality damage. So, well, actually, since he's dealing that, I before I will in engage in a fight with him, I will definitely remove my anti venom component from chest armor and will put sanctified skull since it will give. A good amount of chaos as well as vitality resistance which is necessary in this fight once again do not try to engage in a fight with him uh, if you're at all if your resistance is towards chaos as well as vitality damage are on the low side of things or non-existent at all And even, even if your resistances are pretty decent, I will still show you a couple of abilities from him which you will need to, if not dodge completely, but heal up from them as, qu as quickly as possible. Because to me they are quite deadly. Even at this point. Alright, so I should head actually further down. I will try to ignore most of the mobs. I will just stopping from time to time to... Because in this location, the amount of elite monsters which can spawn is actually quite high. So forgive me if I am contradicting my words of playing fast and stopping by on every elite, but... To me, an elite actually worth to stop by and just dispatch. 
since it's a not only free experience but free rep reputation towards any faction well not any towards a faction on towards a faction uh, which is depending which is benefiting from uh, benefited by you killing a certain type of elite all right so let's actually head up i believe i haven't missed my turn so yep actually there it is And also the type of damage that I'm dealing well or have I missed the turn? Bomber. I think I have missed my turn. Well that's unfortunate. This is the other drawback of trying to play with the in at, with the quick fashion as well as trying to focus on where you actually need to go at the same time so i believe i need to head here let's check it one more time actually yep definitely missed my turn so, I will do actually what I was told you before. I will remove anti-venom cell from my chest guard. Let's say that I will keep an item. And instead I will put a sanctified skull on it. Alright, so... Actually I need to craft it since I have not got it in my common stash. Alright, so Sanctified Skull. Where are you at? Sanctified Bone, excuse me. So I need four Purified Salt. Alright, one, two, three, four. Or one Sanctified Bone. And actually... Just to make sure, I will also put, let's type, chaos. Let's also put imbued silver. Let's apply it. Well, actually I can't because I need to remove chipped claw from my weapon. Well, let's do this. Alright, so let's keep this item and put imbued silver on it so I can toggle on war aura called Void Ward. It will give me 20% more chaos resistance as well as some damage to Ktonic's enemies. Leading resistance as well. And plus 3 to maximum chaos resistance. Right, so now I can safely teleport to the second part of the hidden quest line. Strange that I was already hovering over the stone. Level up some more. This is actually a challenging pack. Two elites at the same time. Well, some of them are is being called Charger, the other one Defender. Let's actually act focus Defender first. Since I believe Defender can heal his ally. Yep, so dispatched of him. And clear his ally as well. Let's level some one more point to Physique. Alright, usually I check all of the areas at this map since since those hounds can spawn from at 
any at any point in given time so it's better ch to check where they are all right so right now we'll be facing Soleil. also Bruno thank you for the follow I appreciate that and welcome to the stream I hope you will have a good time or or already having a good time and I hope you're enjoying my commentary as well as gameplay on the background all right, so Guardian, you will need to avoid at all costs his Vitality slash Chaos Lightning. This, actually, you cannot avoid, but you need to heal it. Heal all the damage. This Lightning. Do not stand in front of it at any cost. Avoid it like a plague. I'm warning you right now, especially in Hardcore. Doesn't matter how many resistances you have. Well, especially in the first difficulty. Do try to avoid it. And when it comes to any other attacks, you can basically apply hit and run technique, which I was talk to you, which I was talking to you before. His damage is also easy to avoid, meaning auto attack damage. Just keep in mind that void lightning, like this one. And the Doom Bolt. I believe it's called Doom Bolt since he is using the same ability which Occultists, um, excuse me, cultists are, are using before. Well, he's almost dead. Nevertheless, let's not try to overreach and play it safe. Right, so he is down as well. And uh, not to let's not waste any time and actually jump straight into an optional. Well optional slash third part of the hidden path quest line which is consisted of well i used the wrong tp or am i nope actually this is the right one which consists of opening a passage to east marsh and well since i'm not clearing the whole area i will just run towards the shrine as well as definitely right so i need 10 scrap do not have it with me right now let me go back quickly to town and pick it up so let me elaborate when i am saying that i will play right now in a quick fashion so i will not clear all the areas on 100 percent i will just focus on main quest, secondary quest, as well as rest restoring shrines. Why? Because I want to get back as fast, as fast as possible to the point where my previous Death Knight has died. Actually, he has died pretty hilarious, ironically, however you like to put it, by dying on Eater Ground right behind last boss in Ashes of Melmoth DLC. So I have cleared all the vanilla campaign as well as all the DLC, have managed to defeat final boss, but died on either ground right behind him due to the fact that my curiosity got the better part of me. I just wanted to check if I haven't seen any of the haven't checked any of the hidden chests behind him. And the truth is there there is nothing behind him. So you need to also keep I strongly advise everyone to keep that in mind especially if you are playing on hardcore so right now I am aware that in this location there are two bosses one of them is at the bottom of the map the other one is to the right far right corner where the the I believe ruin shrine is So let's head directly towards it. And also, I do repeat that the min uh, I never, even though I am playing in a quick fashion, I will not play recklessly. I will still be aware of my surroundings, and I strongly advise anyone to do the same thing. It's just that you need to 
since you have well for those of you who already know which types of attack monsters are doing what can be avoid avoided what can be tanked a little bit it's easier for you to decide on the spot what you can ignore like those mosquitoes what you can get rid of by a couple of swings of your force wave and what you need to definitely stop and put your time and effort to clear all right we have an elite right here who is reducing my cast speed, casting speed significantly as well as movement speed but he is dead alrighty then let's head straight to the boss do not forget that usually this boss is surrounded by a couple of trolls so if you can you can pull him like now I did by himself it's actually a good idea but if like in this example some of the trolls actually was well I guess chained toward him or followed him do not get surrounded that's also another good thing so try to dispatch of his followers first before you will focus your GPS on completely on the boss Overall, this boss is not that difficult to beat, you just have to avoid his slow swings. And when it comes to debuffs, well, if your resistances are high enough, you can, and you have some sort of a life leech or life regen, you can tank his debuffs and damage over time. but the direct attacks try to avoid. Also one thing like this attack, so you just hit me almost and almost took half my life with one swing because I believe he was enraged. Alright, and I can carry any more items, so in this case let me quickly get back to Wars Town and sell all of the things that I don't need. So what I haven't understand, well, I only have some assumptions on it. When monsters glow with red auras around them, is this some kind of a enrage mechanic? Since some of those monsters used uh, well, not used, they are actually doing it. And when it comes to the damage that I'm dealing towards them, sometimes that I see that their resistances go down, but I am actually start hitting, start hitting them harder. I don't know, maybe it's a buff and a debuff and the same, at the same time. Haven't checked on forums yet, perhaps someone with more experience knows what I'm talking about right, right now and actually one thing that I should have done from the start before I moved on to this location is put those two stones runestone of Dracon of Solael back to the common stash since I do not need them right now I'll need them later on, but at least not right now. So this side level 40, I don't think I will be needing it on level 40. Alright, so done with inventory management. Let's quickly check some of the weapons. So I had a mace, plus 208 damage. A better helm, but when it comes to helm, on the level 35 I will be buying, I believe, helmet 
chest and shoulder from Devil's Crossing, so no worries right there. I am more worried more about weapon. Does this guy have anything useful? No. In this case... Let me actually buy this. Even though it's a yellow weapon, it has a plus 10 casting speed, so... Let's try it at least. And also I have managed to found a better medal. Well, is that better? So, let me check. Let's keep an add-on on. Put it back on my medal. Same with the chest guard. And let's equip this weapon and put back a imbued silver on it. And let me toggle on back my aura, quite wo called Void Ward. I will be using this, well, up until the point when I can get an armor from Black Legion, since an armor from Black Legion can tremendously boost your chaos as well as eater resistance. But until then, I'll just have to find a better way to fix, oops, wrong button, to fix those things. Alright, so inventory management done, all of the item, all of the new items are equipped now. Let's get back to the East Marsh. Also, if I would like to remind everyone who is watching the stream right now or who has just tuned in and remember that I have another character, had another character and wondering what had, what has happened to them, you can later on watch it to that character. You can later on watch it on video on demand on Twitch, on my Twitch page or on YouTube, my YouTube channel. All of the links will be under my under the video twitch video player so right now i am quickly moving towards the other boss of this area which to me he is actually a little bit easier to fight than the troll guy since most of the damage that this boss does is comes from I believe bleeding as well as piercing and some physical damage so I I feel more prepared when it comes to those types of damage rather than heavy hit hard heavy hitting physical attacks. At least for now. Alright, so I believe I actually need to head to the right. Alright, so a couple more groups of monsters to go. Yeah, let's actually once again turn right. And I believe there will be no no crossroads. Nope, I was mistaken. There is actually one last crossroad right here. So let me keep heading up. I will make a short detour towards the area where, a ske where skeletons will spawn simply because there will be a high probability of an elite or two which could be spawning on that place. 
if there will be no elite then i will just ignore them for the most part so let's see no nope, just some regular skeletons so in this case can ignore them same with this group just checking if there are no frost revenants among them all right and i believe this is a final group of them you could uh use utilize some more time and clear this area fully due to the fact that it's called it's a quote-unquote type of dungeon and monsters here are i believe three to four levels higher than your character so in terms of experience points you will not be missing out mm. Well, I'm not in terms of time wasting, you will not be doing this by clearing completely this area. But ahead of me lies Steps of Torment, which is actually uncleared up until this point. So I will be focusing my attention toward towards it, rather towards it than in this location. So, as you can see, this boss is not a heavy hitter. Well, at least when it comes to... ...tanking his damage with my current resistances. I will show it to you what they are as soon as I kill this boss. Alright, so more than half HP gone. All I'm trying to bait him to do is either some skills or yeah like this I believe it's type of an acid attack yep he is dead let's quickly search if the bodies right here contain something all right so restore the shrine and can safely go from this location So I actually have two unused constellation points. Once again, this is the drawbacks of playing quickly and not paying too much attention of what you already have. So when it comes to constellation, as you can see, already have Ghoul, fully completed Eel, Scholar's Light. Now I'm working on Kraken. Then I will complete Behemoth. After that... I will level I will complete Revenant and after Revenant we'll work on Empty Throne. So this is a plan. Right, so managed to pick up two knots for casting speed. That's actually really good. So right now let's put this thing to my personal inventory and I will actually head towards steps of torment since right there not only there will be a quest but also another unactivated portal which i haven't been which i haven't restored just yet all right so into the broken hills first I already ran through this location once simply to reach a point where I can complete the second part of the hidden quest. Hidden path, excuse me, quest line. So some of the mobs right here are already dead. Some of the harpies have just came in. Could I just ignore them for the most part? Oh, I almost forgot. So the resistances. Right now, 
elemental resistances as you can see they are over capped right now so more than 80 percent same with poison and acid piercing bleeding vitality the only thing that is lacking is aether resistance i will boost it, that later on chaos resistance once again those two types aether and chaos to me from my experience you can just well if not all but most of it uh, will you can just uh, complete it by buying some of the black legion armor as well as applying some of the shards not the shards the components on amulet and metal the the ones that give you aether resistance and when it comes to stun resistance the thing is that uh, i have figured well from my previous death night that you there will be a point when you will level up this skill as well as this skill so decorated soldier and scars of battle well mostly scars of battle and you'll be finding uh, as well as with the combination of devotion such as empty throne which also gives you extra stun resistance you will not have any problems with stun whatsoever at least on first difficulty the only thing you will need to worry about is the damage that monsters will do when they try to well quote unquote stun you since i was at the dlc called ashes of melmund i was facing against Ethereal Colossus, as well as some of the bosses that look like Eater, well, excuse me, that look like Colossus. And they couldn't, my character didn't even, uh, well, changed into the animation when you're, uh, when, when he's stun, when he's in a stun state. So you can keep that in mind, especially if you plan to play um, if you plan to pick soldier as a secondary or your first character so steps of torment once again I will just try to quickly search for some hidden chests Perhaps even fight some of the groups of monsters, but also will not going to clear for 100%. Simply, if simply for saving time. Also, it's a good idea to actually first get rid of the priest as well as warlocks before you will start to focusing your attention towards elite like this guy all right so he is he is dead The one thing that I still couldn't have couldn't figure out up till this point is that where exactly I can find the blueprint for relic called Mistborn Talisman. Since the, as this is my well second I could say so second playthrough, I have haven't I haven't been able to locate this blueprint yet. I've heard that this blueprint drops from some random troll bosses and I was hoping for I was hoping to pick it up while I was facing off against some trolls in mines on my way to homestead but as it turns out I am still missing this blueprint and if you watch my pre previous three parter on my on either of my channels you actually will notice 
well, also one hilarious thing is that I was wearing at levels almost at level 70 I believe I was still wearing a relic equilibrium which is actually a relic that you can craft on level 18 So I believe that I need to enter this room just to break the wall and search for search for the body just to get some extra loot. Yep. So can head towards the exit of this room. All right, let's continue on. Managed to level up once more. That's actually a good thing since I haven't been able yet to level soldier ultimate until soft cap. Just yet, only one only one point left. And are there any elites here or can I just safely go towards the second floor? Yep, safely can go deeper. Alright, so let's instantly head to the left. Since I see on the minimap another shrine. Right here. A skeletal monstrosity could spawn, but it seems like not right now. Alright, so right here we have a group of monsters with an elite. First, as usual, focus on skeletons, uh, excuse me, on priests. Then on warlocks and then on everything else. Actually, a second elite have just spawned burning and frozen. Interesting combination. Where did they? Did these guys came from? Perhaps from the room that lies further up. All right, quickly search for sarcophagus, and let's prepare ourselves for the next fight. Let's see how many elites. Two. Once again, Bloodthirster, some Priest, and Skeletal Gargantuan. Let's actually focus on Priest first. Still looks kind of weird, like they have moving in, well... They are rising from the ground in sort of a one wave, second wave, and then the third wave. Alright, devotion point. So almost complete almost completed Kraken constellation. Alright, let's not stop and waste any more time than I should. So Got to head. Well, the one drawback that I feel I'm currently making is that if I keep continue that way, especially in the steps of torment and on the next location, I will be missing on. Went into wrong direction. Missing on some treasure troves. But once again, that's the thing that I'm willing to take. As granted, take and accept it. I think I'll check the room to the left just to see if there are any good thing that I managed to find exalted stash. 
So, what I was talking about, yep. This monstrosity scared me a little bit. I actually can tell you one fun fact. On one of the stream I was explaining, well, some tips and tricks how to defeat this, uh, the final boss of this dungeon. When suddenly on my screen, right in front of my character, an elite skeletal monstrosity appeared. And it was so instant that I have, I for a second thought that I was facing a nemesis type of a boss, even though I know that nemesis, well, monster monsters that are being called nemesis starts to appear on second, second difficulty, not on the first one. So he appeared so fast that I thought that my character going to die simply due to the fact he, that he was standing so close to me and I was in the middle of talking, so that was kind of a fun fact to me at least. Alright, so all that remain is to slay Grand Priest Zertulian. So tactics tactic on this boss actually remained the same. Dodge his grenades at all costs and actually just wait until... Why are there no skeletons behind me? Yep, so wait until he... Or either he or skeletons pop up from the ground, dispatch them. And then repeat the process by also dodging his flame pulls right under you. Yeah, he can summon some skeletons from time to time, but you only need to worry of those who spawn right behind you. Yep, so he is dead. Alright. Learn some blueprint. First, let's... Again, I click on the wrong button. I will actually head quickly back to town. Completely free my inventory. And since I'm at level 35, I will buy an armor, which I was talking about, from vendor, from reputational vendor in Devil's Crossing. All right, we have here some elemental damage. Actually, this hammer... Well... Seems like it's worse than mine. All around red. That's actually pretty good gloves. I will definitely change them with mine. Those shoulders I don't need. Yep, I will be definitely going for Creek Set, although I am aware that most of people on forums will recommend me to, well, not me in general, will recommend using Creek Set with Cadence instead of a Force Wave. Uh, but I want to try something different. I want to utilize Creek Set but with two-hander and a force wave and want to see how it will perform on second and on third difficulty in general. Not to beat any record with it or to do something crazy, but just uh, how it performs in a campaign at least. Since I haven't Uh, I am aware that there are actually some shield builds on that Knight. Like I was saying, Cadence, they are utilizing one hander and a shield. And you also can actually utilize even Force Wave with one hander and a shield. However, I do not know how effective it is as a whole. And how well do you perform when when you will compare side by side like spammable Force Wave and one hander and the shield without, with, without the ability to spam it. 
it will definitely be, be more tankier but I don't, I don't know about the damage how your damage will be overall all right so almost done with some inventory management So, mm, nope, I haven't. The thing is that on my previous hardcore character that night, I have beaten Malmut and actually have defeated final boss, which I believe was called the Flashmaster Theoden Marcel, and I have died hilariously because I wanted to find out if there are some hidden stashes right behind him and all i have found was yep also thank you for the following so all i have found behind him was that there is nothing there only the eater ground so eater ground had the better part of me even though uh, up until those points i have almost 12k hp and all of my resistances were, at, uh, were maxed at 80 percent so i will warn everyone from this point on that behind final boss in the ashes of melmut there is nothing there only eater ground and also the uh, ironical thing is that i during my walkthrough have talked about again and again how standing on eater ground is dangerous since, since it will most certainly kill your character if you are planning to stand there for far too long and I died on uh, I died by standing on this ground. So right now I will plan to reach um, the same point as quickly as possible with this character. Now with this character, I will again be uh, applying the same techniques, will level the same skills. I will also, I'd like to add that I am not using any guides. I only utilized, well, you can call it... Well, that's actually good to know. At least... Well, the thing is that uh, at least you know where to farm it, even though it's a very low per chance very low percent excuse me uh, to find it because some of the builds require you to farm like complete open world map like it called i believe it called world drop so it can drop completely random and it also has even more percent i mean the the loot that has the attachment to it called world drop I know that some of the builds require for you like basically to roam around the world and fight some elites and or bosses so at least in creek when it comes to creek set I know where to farm who to kill well for me it doesn't matter how much time it will take I will eventually get it unlike the other ones well not the beginner friendly type of character or sets but up until this point, first I need to reach this point and not die in the process hilariously like I did previously simply because curiosity got the better part of me. Alright, so currently changing my gear towards better one. I have forgotten to put my scrap back into the common stash. Alright, so... Also, the thing is that even though I have removed from scratch during uh, this playthrough, when it comes to the compare... When, when I... When compared to my previous one, the only thing that isn't already from scratch is that I have some of my components from previous character 
as well as legendaries but all of the legendaries i can show to you they are not on uh physical and or internal trauma type of character like this one-handed maze this two-hander which actually converts 44 percent physical damage to chaos those gloves with chaos damage this shield with acid and retaliation those weapon well a shield that actually are a weapon one hander i will not utilize them so two of them actually well one of them physical damage and internal trauma the other is chaos the third one is elemental boots have some bonuses towards pets and finally crimson spike is one handed sword once again vitality and bleeding damage so no legendaries which are waiting for me until uh, when I re will reach certain point the only thing that I have is a prepared two components for juggernaut relic and once again I am still missing a blueprint for Mistborn talisman so two of them is prepared and two good armor that two good pieces of chest armor that I have found one of it is actually well I believe an old keeper as well as demolitionist can utilize it and the other one i can utilize it as well but i will require to level up my character up to level 72 i haven't been able to reach this point yet so that's basically that's the whole thing that i have managed to found on my previous character and some of the recipes for sure but once again neither of those recipes have best in slots armor or weapons that are waiting for me until a certain until a certain point is come so most of my gear will once again be coming from self drop self found stuff that's it all right so enough talking let's actually head to the fort well enough talking about the gear that is Let's actually head to the fourth floor. I already learned this blueprint. And and complete these steps of torment dungeon. So vengeful and crippling. I will ignore those monsters. All right, right here I'm mainly looking for quote unquote completing of well not quote unquote quote unquote death room. I will definitely complete complete it. No elites here. Let's head further on. Mm. Well, I actually did the same thing on my previous run. I am aware that later on uh, you will encounter a NPC in Fort Icon called, um, well, the faction called Outcast, but she is actually called Anasteria, and he will give you quest. And one of them, well, he will, she will give you, excuse me, not he, she will give you quest, and one of them will tell you to go to Steps of Torment and. I believe on fourth floor you need to find something. You need to kill some elite and find an item, f pick up an item from him. But I, I see no problem doing steps of torment this early. Well, on this type of character at least. Perhaps on some of them. On some of the characters you need to wait until like let's say until the point where you finally will meet Anasteria and she will give you this quest but right now and on my previous playthrough on my previous hardcore character there wasn't any issue by completing this roguelike dungeon this early All right, so managed to pick up leg plates of Valor. I remember those pants since I was wearing them at my previous run. All 
All right, managed to level up. So finally have leveled soldier exclusive skill to the max, to the soft cap, that is. And let's finally move towards Necromancer, to, uh, towards Spectral Binding. The plan is, like the previous character, I have leveled Force Wave towards its, res its respective soft cap, Rush towards Soldier's Ultimate all run Rage, then, we'll, then I will pick up Spectral Binding as well as Spectral Red, then Mark of Torment, after, after all of this, I will return towards Soldier Skill Tree and level Scars of Battle, as well as Decorated Soldier. And after all of those two are soft capped, I will switch up towards Warcry and its modification, then towards Military Conditioning, perhaps even some points in Miniers will, and then in Fighting Spirit. Note that I will not pick any movement skill, because I have found that I, well, for me it's a problem to utilize it properly. I most o more often than not find myself in a tight, quote-unquote tight spot, because it seems like I cannot utilize it efficiently. But if you definitely want to try that movement skill, you want to move around the areas either around the areas or from group of monsters from one group of monsters towards the other group firstly you can definitely level some of the movement skills it's just that i cannot use it efficiently all right let's not miss those hidden spoils behind that wall So, since I have completed that room, the one thing that I need to pick up here is, I believe, that a guaranteed legendary, legendary will drop on this in this room. Excuse me, in this room. Yep. So, once again, same legendary one-hander that have a fixed chance to drop 100%, that is. Are there any elites? Nope. Let's ignore those monsters and head to the next ones. Right there, there is a dead end, so no point in going in that direc direction. One elite have just spawned. Let's actually move back a little bit since I see that some of the apparitions start approaching. Although, well, didn't expect that I got rid of them that quickly. Somehow this ghost have teleported behind this wall even though a second ago he was standing right in front of those gates I also would like to add that on this difficulty well from my experience No, but, uh, the thing is that he didn't he, he didn't give me a problem whatsoever. I have managed to defeat him, well, if not so easily, but if not easily, but uh, not that hard. So kind of in the middle. So he was definitely challenging, but beatable. Mm. And also, I have heard that the second DLC is even tougher than the first ones. Well, perhaps it's 
it sounded more logical to me to complete the first DLC called Ashes of Malmont than move moved on to Forgotten Gods. That is still the plan. That's still my plan at this point. And well, since I am at it, I would also like to add that Melmont as a whole haven't given me a lots of problems, even their bosses right there, such as the boss in the Ancient Grove, as well as some of quote unquote out, out, outdoor, outworld bosses. It's just that I need to tell, keep telling myself that not all of the Ether Grounds contains hidden stash on it. Especially if they are unexplored. So it is better. It's better now to just leave them unexplored, unopened, rather than to risk a character dying, especially on hardcore difficulty. So right now I will be facing some. Well, another boss. Well, this is actually a pretty good suggestion from you. Well, I I will definitely try it some later on. It that is. Right now, I just wanted to. Well, since I haven't been able to complete this game at least at the first difficulty, meaning the main campaign, I want uh, as well as their DLCs. I want to do it. On and uh, on hardcore, that is. So perhaps it would be easier first to play on softcore and to see what enemies can do. But no offense against ones who play on softcore, but I think that, well, for me uh, personally, I'd rather, well, try not to do a quote unquote corpse runs. If you know what I mean, so basically die and try again, die and try again, die and try again with the same point. I'd rather uh, and continuing and continuing to play recklessly, not learning from encounters whatsoever, just hitting the boss with your corpses or elites until finally they will die. Um, I would like to play on. I would like to stay on the safer side of things, meaning not only to not play, to not play recklessly, but also from time to time, like I was doing on my previous character, I tend to memorize all, uh, most of the attacks that monsters are doing, so what can I avoid, what can I tank? That includes Ashes of Malmode DLC also. S and it's better for me, well, you can completely agree it's fine, especially if you're playing on softcore, but on hardcore I, I find it this approach to be more successful, rather than just by doing some sort of a corpse run until until the point where you you are finally able to beat the game and all of its content by just like I was saying, throwing the corpses at, uh, at random spots and see what happens. But once again, so if you prefer softcore, completely fine. Or in general, if you pre prefer a more reckless approach. But nevertheless, thanks for the suggestion.
I will be definitely doing it sometime in the near distant future. So right now I have managed to clear the fourth floor. It was actually good that I have circled around this room and went this hallway since I believe I killed here three or four elites. So the only thing that is left right now is final floor. Alright, is there any point of me getting into this room? Nope, there was none. Just some champions and some regular chests. It's uh, uh, I find it odd. Well, I'd like to add one more thing. I find it quite kind of strange that Eater Ground deals more damage than final boss in Ashes of Malmud DLC. Even if you have maxed out like resistances towards every possible parameter, so. That's one thing that I find strange. Well, not unfair, but strange nevertheless. Alright, so now... I am slowly approaching towards encounter with the boss. This is unfortunately a dead end, so I need to circle around. Leveled up once again. Well, first let's dispatch of those groups of monsters. Yep, so from this point on I will be leveling Spectral Binding. Up until it will... Up until Soft Cap. Also, one thing that I forgot to add is that I'm actually using a mod called Grim Internal, which allows me to auto pick up items, components, lore nodes, as well as see how many items I have collected overall for a game session, how many bosses I've killed, heroes, champions, how many gold I have collected. Well, uh, not how many gold I have earned when it comes to selling, just have collected by itself. How many experience as well as as approximate time until the next level up and one other thing that i find pretty important is that it shows to you what type of damage monsters are dealing towards your character so you can work on your oops wrong button you can work on your weak points to improve them by just utilizing this parameter also, some of those parameters can be turned off, so if you did not want, you can completely turn off some of those parameters. If you do not want to be this text, uh, if you do not want to have this, all of those parameters turned on, you can turn off some of them. And for me, it's a pretty good mod overall. So right now, my inventory is full. The tactic that I am using in this situation is that I am turning off the auto pickup system 
and I will throw some of those stuff that I will be, will not need for sure because I know that at the end of every roguelike dungeon when you defeat final boss there will be from three from three to four chests which you can open and loot and even if you drop some items right now at the end you will definitely can fill up your inventory back to full pretty easily back to full status that is and i will be looking for gear that will drop on the floor or from chests that have physical or internal trauma type of damage right so definitely will not be needing any shields or ranged weapons and let's reorganize a little bit all right so i'm good to go let's continue on all right so three elites managed to almost killed one of them second is down also Vitality, and once again Vitality, and Elemental Damage. Let's see what lights on the Bone Altar. Poison, Fire, and Cold. Once again, ignoring this. I am already at the homestead region when it comes to actually let's pick those up when it comes to main storyline and I have activated a waypoint there also managed to do several quests for black legion meaning in pine barrens territory so I already was there as well so as soon as I complete Steps of Torment, I will be heading towards left side of the Homestead region to deal with the bugs, as well as deal some additional side quests and or main quest. Alright, so let's actually check this bottom area because I know that there can be a chest right around here. Yep, let's open it, see what it has. Nope. Fire damage rifle and this one. Vitality and bleed. I think I will just go straight to the bathroom. All right. So the strategy to defeat this boss is actually pretty simple. You actually 
first of all, do not stand under any circumstances on this, on the circle, on the blue circle, which he will from time to time create under your character, since it will apply not only freeze effect, but also will slow your movement speed as well as your casting and attack speed. And the second thing to watch for is his arc blade, which is he, he was using right now. I believe he, by using arc blade, he is applying a debuff towards your physical resistance. So, I try to trying to face tank him for a long time. At least at this point in the game, it's a bad idea. Also, if you try to run away, run away from him, like not too not too long, but I mean on a greater distance, he will be utilizing some sort of a freeze ray. And if your character has low resistances towards freeze effects as well as to, yep like this one the combo can combo from it can be pretty my pretty deadly especially if at the previous point you were standing under this circle this blue one you can make things easier by applying a how is it called well, some kind of an oil to reduce freeze effect on your character. But even without it, as long as you will play safe, you'll be good to go. Alright, so manage to clear manage to clear this dungeon. Let's see what loot it has at the end. Well, sadly no particular loot towards my character, but nevertheless, like I was saying, you can just fill up your inventory back to full, and you can head straight towards exit from this roguelike dungeon. All right, let me quickly do some inventory management. I can sell this blueprint since I already learned, learned it. Alright, so let me put them separately so to not to sell them accidentally. The one thing that uh, was good, well, yeah, it was actually it is actually good that came from. This is the second character, so you can say this is my second experience overall with this game. Previous the previous character was my first blind playthrough. I haven't played uh, this game before, especially on hardcore difficulty with veteran included. So this is my second time all right so managed to sell everything that i don't need 
so where was I? Yep, so one thing that is was good and is good right now that came from that of my previous character is the fact that I do not need a huge amount of money towards recipes. Well, at least until the point that I get certain faction until the until revered level or some of them towards well at least some of them towards revered and the new ones which I haven't encountered yet in at the Forgotten Gods expansion so in all of the drawbacks I see some pluses and also the fact that, like I was saying, I already know what abilities monst monsters will do, how to avoid them, if not every time, but most of the time, what can I tank, etc, etc. So... It will definitely help me at the future runs. If not on this character, then on the next one, for sure. Okay, so right now, let's deal with those pesky bugs. Already encountered an elite right here. Alright, and let me turn back on my auto pickup stuff from this mod. One thing, one thing that I was wondering about when it comes to Ashes of Melmut is that there were two places which I couldn't unlock and all of them basically were saying that those places are locked by ethereals. I assumed that you need to level up the... perhaps you need to level up reputation Yep, that's what I was talking about, so, like, in this case I was right, so I needed to level up reputation with, perhaps with Melmont Resistance, yep, with Melmont Resistance, to unlock those rooms. So, I am curious of what lies behind those walls, but... Let's hope it will not be some sort of an eater ground without any monsters or items <laughs> that you need to run by to save to save your character from death. <laughs> All right, did I get a second quest? Yep, I did. So I can safely go well first towards the diary, which I need for another secondary quest. And then towards another unrestored shrine. Alright, I can tell you about my devotion tree, what I was I'm planning to do, so Currently, my setup when it comes to Devotion is I have leveled up Ghoul, then Eel, then Scholar Slide. Scholar Slide and Eel were leveled to unlock Kraken Constellation. Now I will work on Kraken Constellation, only one point left. Later, I will level Behemoth Constellation and I will attach it to Soldier Ultimate 
exclusive skill. As soon as I level, will level Behemoth Constellation, I will move towards Revenant to have some more movement, uh, not movement, so to have some more life leech, resistance reduction, as well as, what is it called? I forgot, so... Yep, ability to absorb energy, energy from enemy spells. After Revenant, I will move towards Empty Throne, level Empty Throne, and then I will move towards Chariot of the Dead constellation. Chariot of the Dead, I think I will attach it to either towards Field Command or towards Necromancer Spectral Red. And from it, I believe. I will also pick up. Yep. So the thing is that I wanted to pick up Chariot and and Behemoth simply, uh, well, several reasons. One of them is that when it comes to Behemoth, it gave you a lot of passive health region as well as a good proc. When monsters are hitting you, you will get some of your HP back. So same thing with the proc on the Chariot and sometimes they will work together and also due to the fact that chariot is actually giving you a lot of offensive ability and uh, to my opinion boosting your well the funny thing was that um, my previous death knight up until level 67 or 68 i believe even though he hasn't suffered from damage as a whole his offensive ability was always le uh, always lesser than his defensive ability so i wanted to fix that by also leveling chariot of the dead and when it comes to final devotions i think i will be picking hammer since it boosts my internal trauma as well as physical damage as a whole perhaps i will pick owl just to have um, defensive ability and also one important thing, reflected damage reduction. At this difficulty it's not so important, but at the later difficulties I do not want to basically die from my own damage by hitting another reflective monster or mage who casts a shield on it and uh, the second you will notice your character died because you spam force wave too often. I don't know about if I am, will manage to, I'll definitely try to pick up Solemn Watcher at the end, towards the end, to boost my defensive as well as get some more reflected damage reduction, as well as, as, well as defensive ability overall. And that's basic, I believe that's basically it. Alrighty then, so let's head to the northern area. Because, like I was saying, in some of those houses there will be a diary. Yep, in this one. Yep, diary for the quest. Alright, so right now I am heading towards Unrestored Shrine. Let's quickly restore it. So, Kraken Constellation is done. Next Constellation is Behemoth. I am running towards bottom side area of this map simply because I know that at the bottom side there will be some additional 
opportunities to complete side quests as well as to fight against some elites later on. I believe he will be fighting against harpies. We have two elites right here, one of them is reflective, the other is overgrown, and there's actually a witch doctor that healed one of them. I also can talk about another, well, at the same time funny and scary moment which has happened to my previous character at the Ashes of Melmoth DLC so while when I was clearing the first area of Ancient Grove which is a roguelike dungeon in the Ashes of Melmoth there was a point where I was facing some of the elites and behind those elites were shamblers Mm, well, golems, which in this game they look like golems that control the their deadly ability is they are throwing rocks at you at the distance which can stun you, and those rocks deals like, those rocks actually deal pretty good amount of damage to your character. So the thing was that I haven't noticed that the, there were four golems right there. And while I was fighting the elites, elites was casting something on me. And only at the last second I, was, I have noticed that three rocks just hit me and I was stunned for like two or three seconds. And my HP went almost from full to 20-ish percent. That was a very scary moment, I immediately, well, good thing that my healing potion wasn't on cooldown. Immediately my ghoulish hunger proc went off, went on. And I tried to uh, auto-attack as much, well, as many monsters as possible. And also utilize the healing potion. And from there on I, I tried to if uh, pay closer, pay close attention toward, towards what what is hitting me from what distance so not to avoid those to avoid those kinds of situation yeah uh, I agree with this but also the thing is that at that point I haven't been able to max out my stun resistance yet. Later on in the Ashes of Melmoth, when I were when I were, when I finally reached Melmoth, my stun resistances went actually through the, through the roof, be, due to the fact that most of my gear has uh, some stun redux, reduced stun duration, as well as I, uh, Scars of Battle has some stun duration reduction, and Chariot, oh, I'm sorry, not the Chariot, Empty Throne had some stun reduction. So even like I was facing against the Colossus from Melmoth, the ones which you are facing in, this, in the sewers, as well as the ones who protecting the bridge, they were charging at me and my character didn't even uh, transformed into stun animation, if you know what I mean. So I was taking damage, but the, the stun effect was basically non-existent. Alright, so let's actually head towards the house down here. Leveled up, that's a good thing. Spectral binding. So, by the looks of it, some of my items give me pluses towards spectral binding. Because I leveled it three times and it says 5 out of 12. Okay. 
That's good to know. Let's put spectral mining. Mm, yep, I actually did. So if you look at here, restored shrine, infested farms. This shrine actually allowed me to finally level my Kraken constellation. So let me turn on my spectral binding aura. Alright, so where is this house that I'm looking for? It's not here. Okay, so in this case, well, there's actually an elite right here. An elite that spawns some cold terror zombies. Good to know. Alright, so right here I will be facing against some of the harpies. Already see one elite. Two, three. Those harpies are in general not that tough. Even when you start to when you face them at the broken hills when they are finally start appearing as an enemy, they are not that tough to deal with. Right, managed to pick brawler gloves. These gloves gives Good amount of physical internal trauma as well as offensive ability. But actually it does not well only reduce duration can count as a defensive attribute. Reduce stun duration. Alright, so I will actually head this time to the north just to find an entrance towards a layer in which I will kill the Swarm Queen. Alright, is there any interesting things to loot? Seems like no by the looks of it. By the way, I will not be going into Port Valbury. Um, right now, I will be going into Port Welbury Valbu later on when I will receive a quest from a friendly faction. Even though there are there are actually benefits of going into this port right now, just for the sake of that at this port you can actually restore another shrine which can give you additional devotion point but 
to me there is no point of doing it doing it right now later on you will be better pre better prepared and also well the thing is that i found that port valbury is well at least for me is the most and was the most difficult roguelike dungeon overall when it comes to vanilla campaign not counting the dlc one even well i can put them in this order so the easiest one for me were definitely stops steps of torment the second easiest was not the easiest but the second one in the rank system is bastion of chaos simply because yes bastion of chaos at the beginning can look very intimidating but you immediately will come to a conclusion that most of those most of encounters in bastion of chaos can be cheesed quote-unquote cheesed by i don't know the developers kind of intended this way or not what i mean by it is that you will see a lot of islands uh, on in bastion of chaos and passages from one island to another or from one node to ro from one road to another excuse me will be blocked by some crystals most of those monsters which you will eventually need to be facing off will try as soon as they will spot you they will try to group near those crystals and if you're playing some sort of a range caster melee type of caster like the force wave you can cheese all of them by just not um well yeah it's ki it's kind of a big dungeon since well i believe uh, you you cannot teleport from either of them when you will reach a point where you will enter a area where it will says that you require a skeleton key in order to open it but the thing is like i was saying so most of the mobs can be killed easily by just standing right near the entrance and kill them with your ranged skill you cannot do the same thing in port valbury they will eventually in port valbury that's the first thing in steps of torment you well there are some there are a few places that you can do it but in steps of torment monsters monsters are in generally not that tough to deal with but when it comes to bastion of chaos most of the encounters can be cheesed by doing this method that's the first thing so you will definitely feel be more safe the second thing which in my opinion dramatically increase the difficulty in roguelike dungeons such as port valbury when it comes to the comparison with the bastion of chaos actually even with the ancient grove is the eater ground this eater ground will annoy you this eater ground will prevent you from maneuvering free freely underground like for example you are getting used to like hit and run techniques so you basically maneuver whenever you want to go in port valbury you you will not be able to do this simply because if you will not be careful you will be taking an horrendous amount of damage simply because the ground itself will try to kill you not the monsters not the leads not bosses is the ground itself so even and actually funny thing is that i have looked in at the youtube the other youtube videos so most and the forum posts most of the people count port valbury as also most hated dungeon due to the fact that even even speed running this place is kind of hard to do simply because this debuff when you are standing on the ground and it will slowly kill you will deal damage no matter how tanky your character is no matter how much region hp regeneration you have or armor so and when you try to speed run this place uh, you will every time get to a point where
Well, is this uh, some kind of a boss in the second expansion or location? Because I don't know, Herald of Flame... Oh, uh, you mean the, the thing that the door that is uh, says on it locked by a black legion. I assume that's the one. Because I have just, well, I have spotted this door and it says that you cannot unlock it. You need uh, it, it locked by a black legion. But nevertheless, so the thing is, uh, this ether, this ether ground, to me, it's the most difficult thing about this, about the, well, one of the most difficult thing. The other thing is, it's it's that room, called Flame of Valbury. The death room itself. And the monsters which will be spawning in a wave are not that difficult, once again. The only thing that's difficult about this room is the fact that underneath you, underneath the floor, there will be some sort of a eater volcanoes. Some of them will turn, all, turn off and turn on from time to time. And the process of dealing damage towards your character from it will be the same. The longer you will stay on it, the the greater the damage will be. Well, since I was I managed to beat this well the vanilla game and the DLC only one time, I Mm, I only went into Valbury just for the quest purposes. And I've heard that people actually recommend you to when they're mm, just to do the quest to kill the monster that you're supposed to kill to get necessary quest item. And then you can safely just teleport, well, log out from the game and log in. You will be teleported back to town. So not to avoid the necessary, not to avoid any of the annoying and difficult stuff that you will have to face later on. All right, so he is dead. I actually I have just remembered that I shouldn't even came at this cave. I need to I need to enter in the next cave. In the next cave there will be a secret passage that will lead to another shrine. Although an exalted stash is definitely A good thing. One thing that I would like to add is, well, it, for me it was kind of a disappointment and a relief at the same time, is that at the intro cutscene that, has, that is playing to you before you, before you will start your journey towards Ashes of Melmoth DLC, it is showing to you the Melmoth itself, 
Well, and some of the locations that you will be... F that you will be working through on your way to Melmont. So the Melmont itself looks like a city that is constantly burning. Like even on the loading screen you can tell by the looks of it that there will be a constant fires right there, so on and so forth. And I have thought, generally have thought that, genuinely I'm sorry, have thought that when I will came to Melmont, it will be a second Port Valbury. However, it was a relief to find out that Melmont actually wasn't that difficult in terms of how you can move around, how you can kite monsters, so on and so forth. Melmont actually to me looked like a place that oddly enough wasn't attacked by ethereals but actually was attacked by some kind of an aerial bombardment or artillery bombardment or both. So I don't know, maybe it's just me. But to me it looked it it didn't look like the place was in the same condition like for example All right, so let's enter this cave. So it wasn't at the same condition like like Port Valbury was. Even though I even though most of the lore notes says to you and also at the original game and at the beginnings of the Ashes of Melmoth, it says to you directly that Melmoth serve, serves as a quote-unquote stronghold for Ethereals. From there, they are launching their attacks from northern region, they are launching their attacks to the other region. However, the, the truth is, well, at least from my perspective, they were not so tough there. So, I don't know what, maybe just the my own opinion, but you, especially if you were be playing this game for the first time, you will definitely have more problems facing the materials at the vanilla campaign rather than at Melmut itself. All right, so next devotion point. Let's start. Let's start working towards Behemoth. That's actually when it comes to the lore part, but when it comes to the game, game part, excuse me, and all of the new types of monsters which you are facing off, it's actually quite interesting to fight against and to overcome. Alright, so this area is almost cleared. Let me head back towards the exit. Alright, I can't carry anymore, so this means inventory management. Interesting calls, a good thing to know that.
that's a better X. Let's find out if vendors have... Also, about the vendors, so majority of the stuff from uh, that you will be wearing on your character, you will either pick on the ground or from chests or from vendors that will sell you for rep reputation points. Well, quote-unquote reputation points. You need to just unlock certain level of reputation and to buy them. The regular vendors, from my experience, most they most of those items are junk. You will not buy from them any of the useful items. That's actually a good ring. Alrighty then, so let's change some items. Later on I will actually remove imbued silver component from an axe and I will try to apply Oleron's blood on it simply because there will be Black Legion armor that I will buy later and Black Legion armor gives you a very big boost towards your eater as well as chaos resistance even by itself without any components So, right now I'm not that worried about my Aether or Chaos Resistance. Alright, let's head back to... The swarm hive or cave. And let's actually head towards the second Grand Vizier and then straight to the entrance where Queen lies, Queen of this hive. I'm moving in the wrong direction. Well, good thing that I have those this extra movement speed to move around quickly. So the second Vizier should be at the right corner of this map. I just need to work my way through those rivers and sentinels. Did I miss him somehow? 
Or is he at this area? Let me double check. So this is the entrance towards Queen. I think I think he is yep, he is definitely was hiding right here. Also, if your character is not that tanky, you can any just bait this attack, this long, dub, like I would call it double swing attack, since after it you have like a couple of seconds when you can dish out some damage completely without any retaliation. So even if you are playing a character which whose primarily offensive skill is auto attacks like this one, you can do a couple of auto attacks, wait for his swing, then move back a little bit, then repeat the same process. Alright, it's time to... well, first let's clear this area out of any unwanted guests. And then I will face Queen of this hive. Actually, one thing that I should be doing right now, I think, is that I need to... I believe I can remove one point from the crossroads. In the devotion, meaning the blue one, since I already have six and I only need five to in order to in order that Kraken constellation is working, and I can remove the red one and put those two points towards Behemoth to unlock its effect, its healing effect, and start leveling it up. So the queen itself is not actually that challenging. All you have to do is try to move around a little bit and work work your way around her acid pools. That's the first phase. The second phase you'll be facing her when she will try to hit you in point blank range. So this is her second phase, once again just avoid her swings, like those ones, and continue to kite and hit her. Those rocks, if you will get hit by them, they will stun you. But they, this attack is, user, is usually telegraphed by her screaming, yep. Although this time nothing, yep, the rock just fell behind her. Alright, so she is dead. So this is all when it comes to Queen. Also, let me ask you, Ayerba, you was talking about... Uh, go mm, you was talking about Golos, so is this the same Golem that is is this one of two golems uh, either one who are defending the gate or the one who is in Melmut sewers under Melmut sewers You mean you mean the you mean Queen or Grand Vizier? Oh, 
that's the one. Okay. I thought for a second that you were, you was talking about the uh, golem creature who is lurking in in the Malmut sewers, or the one who is protecting the gate at, in the main quest in the Malmut itself. Alright, so I am actually heading towards the final quest in this territory, which is called Destroy the Ethereal Amalgamation. And after that I am done with this location called Rotting Cross Plants. Oh yeah, so that that is why previously I had an achievement called, I believe something like Lost or Forgotten. That I and I thought that was a reference to the one ring, but not to Gollum itself. All right, so. Right now, I will be facing against Flesh Warped Trolls and Ethereals in this location. So no more bugs from here on now. Spotted an elite and already managed to dispatch him. Alright, so while I am on my way towards this ethereal amalgamation, I can briefly talk about what he can do, what what he sh you should be looking for. So he's he can actually do certain types of attacks, like for example, he will. When he starts to use flurry of attacks, you should not you should definitely not try to tank it, so those are just regular auto attacks. Then he will try to punch the ground and as soon as he will do this. And the ethereal I believe well they're not actually mages, I will call it shooters, quote unquote, will spawn around him. And they will hit your character from a distance. Also, from time to time, an ethereal geysers will spawn on the territory which will, you will be fighting him. You, so, those geysers are actually not from amalgamation itself. It's just a thing that developers have created for this encounter. Same as with Flame of Valbury. And the final thing that you need to be on the lookout is when he steps the ground several times and from his steps uh, several ethereal force waves. Well, I, I would call it force wave because they kind of look like a force wave only the ethereal variety will actually spawn from him and those force waves will actually try to hit you. So you can just move around him in a circle when he try when he do that. I believe he will do six of them or five. 
and after that so the process basically repeats from the beginning and one thing that I forgot to mention is that this eater ground so do not stand on it under any circumstances for too long Yep, so, like like I was talking about, those are Ethereal Geysers, those are his quote-unquote Force Waves. This is actually a bad spot. Let me move back a little bit. So he is actually, yep, so he is calling for reinforcements. And when it comes to other aspects, he is not that difficult. Yep, like I was saying, the only thing you need to avoid of like a plague is those force waves and those geysers. So, yep, so he is dead. And I'm actually done with this location. Can teleport safely towards Homestead. And let's talk to NPCs to complete the, their quests. I also am respected with this faction. However, as I remember, I do not not. I do not need anything from them, and I already bought blueprints from my previous playthrough. There was much I see you my scouts have reported back from What status did I just get? Oh, oh friendly, I thought I was I thought by some miracle I already got honored with them. Alright, so one thing that I will be doing right now is that I will complete the secondary quest called Lost, Lost Armaments. You, you need to head towards the area to the right area from the homestead called Conflagration. And right there Let me pop my healing potion. Okay, so from here you'll be heading to the right all the time. There will be actually a crossroad. And one of the roads will be blocked by ethereal crystals. And you're gonna need dynamite to open it. This road that is opened by dynamite will lead you towards towards a rift and if you click on the rift you will be teleported to teleported closer towards the port Valbury. It's actually kind of an outskirts of a Valbury I could say. Alright so let me first clear this area Somehow I have missed my final force wave. So this point is even marked on your minimap by the circle. That's what I was talking about. So I can clear those crystals and actually let me head there just to destroy some either clusters because I need some more resources to craft dynamite once again I will not tell I will not go to Port Valbury just yet that's the rift that I was talking about ethereal rift All 
All right, we had a reflective elite. All right, so picked up some resource picked up some resources from here. And I will continue on with this secondary quest. By the way, do not worry if you do not have up until this point any dynamite or resources for it. The thing is that for by destroying those Ether Crystals you will have a chance to pick up those either shards so if you are running low on resources you can just log in and log out back those crystals will respawn and by those I mean the ones which are laying like on the open ground not the ones that, that are that were hiding behind this wall that needed to dynam that, that needed dynamite to open it So again two elites. All right, so let's head further on. Can I pick it up from here? Nope, need to go around, unfortunately. See what I mean by standing on this ground? I just lost like, four, well, almost 40% of my HP for two seconds. Alright, can I do the same here? Yep, I can. And I believe on this side there will be no either clusters left. Also, another interesting fact about an abilities, which monsters will, will be doing later on in the game. Well, to be more specific, at the Ashes of Malmont DLC. Demon types. So, what do the demon types can do? So, as I have found out on myself, basically some of the demons, they will utilize Shout. That will, well, it's a... I believe it's the same like a soldier's war cry shout. So it instantly will reduce your HP numbers on on 33%. They will they can do this even without hitting you a single time. You can do this as well as a soldier, but it's a it was a surprise to find out that enemies can do this as well. That's one thing. The other thing that some of them can do some of them can actually let me move back they can actually remove your active auras from your character so there was a point when i was facing some of the elites and i had turned on my spectral red my field command as well as all runs rage and at the middle, in the middle of the fight, my abilities were turn, turned off. 
So... Yep, this is also a case, so if your mana, uh, well, in this game, energy, but the majority of the people call it mana anyway, uh, it, if you low on mana, some of the abilities will turn off. But nevertheless, I actu actually had mana, but they have the ability to, to turn off your active auras. So if you're playing, well, I guess, type of character that is pretty much dependent on your active auras all the time do keep that in mind that uh, sometimes they can turn your auras off all right so first phase is down second phase So he is almost dead. Yep. Alright, so all that is left is to clear the rest of the mobs. And choose to claim resource claim this resource for Black Legion. So as you can see this homestead is transformed, meaning that on the walls and near it cannons as well as armament for it appears. Right now, I am just accepting some more quests. Okay, so one other thing that is actually is going to happen right now is that you will have to choose between... Well, actually, I would say I didn't play... I didn't find out if you can ignore those two factions. Previously, I have chosen one faction to help. Why, why, why this particular faction, I will explain it to you right now. But I am still curious, can you play without any of those factions? And continue on with your playthrough, or are you actually forced to choose? I don't know. Right now, I will still choose this faction. Yep, you, so you still have to choose one, yep. In this case, so, let me quickly explain what will actually happen right now. So, since I am playing as a Dead Knight, combination between, between Soldier and Necromancer, and if you read lore notes, well, at least some of it, and sp speak to other NPCs, you will actually find, find out that in this game, Necromancy is despised by the majority of folks. Especially, this uh, necromancy is despised by the fanatical cults, such as this one, called Kaiman's Chosen. So, if you are planning to play a certain type of character and you want to combine, combine it with the necromancer, be warned that you will not be able to choose Kaiman's Chosen faction. You will only have the ability to choose, in this case, Order of Death's Vigil. This is, as uh, further on I have found out, well, as soon as he stopped talking, okay, so further on I have found out that actually Order of the Death's Vigil sell even some items that can be usable even by soldiers, such as such, a, such as the ones who are dealing physical or piercing damage. So, 
this is actually important because if you click on the first time and you said what sort of equipment do you offer they the game itself will tell you that order of that switch will will offer in game description mind you in game description what sort of equipment do they offer cold vitality and minions and you are basically thinking hmm but what if i am playing so i was thinking previous uh, at my first playthrough but i was uh, i am playing right now as a physical and internal trauma type of damage build so why do i have to choose a faction that can only says to you like uh, Cold, Vitality, and Minions. I won't. I am not playing currently with any of those types of damage or parameters. So, uh, once again, do not be discouraged by it. I can tell you, even if you are playing a type of a physical character, like, like let's just say Pierce damage, or physical damage, or internal internal trauma damage, and you is forced to choose order of the death ritual this faction will also give it give to you some of uh an items which can be applicable to physical builds the game disc do not rely solely on the game description if we, if you would like to find out even more about it you can actually choose to google it on some forums or you can use a website called grimtools.com you can check what type of equipment every faction provides on what level of reputation you will be unlocking some stuff and i repeat do not be discouraged and rely solely on game description because if if i were if i were to do the same thing at my as my first playthrough i well further on i will still find out that i was still in a good shape when it comes to equipment variety from them but at the beginning i thought that i was that it was kind of a bummer to choose them simply because i wanted to play and choose only those faction that like let's just say fighter ones like those ones kaiman's chosen so this this is was this was my explanation All right, so let's continue on with the story. And also one thing that I want to check out. Nope. Uh, I have quickly checked if I managed to reach the next level of reputation with faction called Ravers simply because I know that Ravers will give to you a quest which uh, their quest is all about restoring their sacred their sacred shrine and in order for you to do so the first the first thing that you need to collect is that in in the next location called blood grove you need to be enter you need to be entering into the void into the red portal and you need to collect a one piece of a component that you need to restore uh, our sacred shrine right now unfortunately i cannot do this but later on i will definitely going to do this simply because one shrine means more means not only the quest reward but also devotion point all right so, so i need to head to the left side
almost managed to reach another waypoint. All right, and let's actually speak to Master Veruk in order of the Death's Vigil in order to start their quest line. Alright, so I actually can give any, well, let's say one, one more tip. One more tip that I can give to you, well, when uh, sp specifically when it comes to a Dead Knight character, is that there will be like a point when you finally will reach like let's say port uh, not the port the ashes of Melmut and you you want to work on with the two faction with the reputation of two faction called Barrowholm as well as Coven's Refuge simply because they will provide an equipment for I believe you can wear it from level 65 and from six, from level 65 they will boost up your physical and inter internal trauma damage significantly as well as resistances you can do this even before you will reach Melmoth so if you feel like you're lacking in certain parameters such as damage or resistances just by doing their quests from bounty table as well as their personal quest line will give you access towards gear that you are looking for to once again, uh, to boost up your whether it be your defense offense so on and so forth so that's actually my last tip and i hope you have enjoyed my commentary as well as gameplay i wish you all the luck and i will see you on the next stream yep see you actually this is a great opportunity for me to use this calm moment to first of all to say hi and welcome for all of you who is watching the stream from the beginning or for all of you who have tuned in recently my name is Alexander also known as Sander Yevitz and I am playing a game called Grim Dawn on hardcore difficulty with veteran included I am playing as a dead knight a combination between soldier and necromancer And if you are one of those people who was watching me from the beginning, from the first part, and you are asking yourself, why is he playing a Dead Knight again if he already had one? Well, the thing is that... And why is he is his stream right now named differently, like part 1.1, 1.2? The thing is that my previous Dead Knight have died right at the end of the Ashes of Malmont DLC. He, he died horrendously if you like to find out more i will not gonna spoil to you but i have managed to defeat final boss and i wanted to search whether he had something behind him so this is the reason why he died <laughs> without any spoilers nevertheless right now my plan is to get as quickly as possible to the point where my character my previous character had been and by meaning quickly, I let me elaborate. I mean I will not be clearing every location on 100%. I will just be moving from one main quest to another main quest, from one secondary quest to another, and restoring some shrine points along the way in order just to save time.
All right. So need to head to the left. If you would like to check the first part of this already new playthrough, which is named Grim Dawn Hardcore Dead Knight, Hardcore Veteran Dead Knight Part 1.1, you can do this on video on demand on Twitch or on my YouTube channel. The link on it is under this YouTube player, uh, I'm, excuse me, under this Twitch player. So you can do this later at your own leisure. Right now I am at the Blood Grove territory, working on several quest lines. And continuing on with the main campaign. Right, let's actually head to the next devotion shrine. So another devotion shrine is restored and I am one step closer to the active skill from Behemoth's constellation called Giant Blood. Also, when it comes to the type of a Death Knight that I'm currently playing, I am playing as a, as a physical and internal trauma type of a Death Knight. It's the beginner friendly type of a character, meaning that it does not require huge time effort for you to find and wear best in slot gear. It does not require any legendaries to be effective. The only thing that is required for you is to farm up on the second difficulty farm up on the second difficulty your creek set but even then even before it you have the tankiness you have the damage to withstand and dispatch every fall that comes in your way so you will be not you will not be lacking in any defensive or offensive parameter even before you have you will manage to finally find and find a uh, farm and find your creek set also this character is very easy to play when it comes to micro or uh, macro controlling meaning the controlling of your character itself, what type of abilities you are using, where you are standing right now currently, so... As, as I said at the beginning, it's a beginner-friendly character, so... But even though he is a beginner-friendly... me. Uh, it implies that he. Uh, it implies also that he is not weak in any of the parameters that you are looking for. And personally, I think that it's a great starting character for anyone who has just picked up the game and wanted to play it. But uh, I do not force you to cr to create and pick it. It's just my opinion, which has came from the experience from my. Well, I'll take it with a grain of salt from my second playthrough. This is just my second playthrough. Previous one have ended at the end of Ashes of Melmond DLC. Alright, so far I think I was heading in the wrong direction actually, or... 
Right here I see Chthonic Rift. Although I think I do not need to enter it right now simply because I do not have a quest, secondary quest from Ravar's faction. So no point going in that direction right now. Instead I think I'll head right. But before I do this, let me quickly check what this quest, this quest want me to do. So... Alright, so this is the main quest. So I need to just search the cult camps in order to find Alcadar's remains. Interesting. Why have I haven't why I haven't seen them before? Perhaps I need to head to the right. I usually try to always save her. I do not see... Well, perhaps for the variety purpose, you can only... Try and choose another option, if you would like. But on my previous playthrough, I saved her. And right now, I, I try to save her as well. Alright, so... Right here there will be actually another quest which you can complete once you will have once you have with you dynamite. Try to avoid this blue circle since it's not only reduce your armor but it also reduces your movement speed as a whole as well as attack speed and your casting speed. Yep, so like I was saying this quest right here you are doing it just for experience purposes if not for items. Once again, where are those Malkadar's remains? I haven't missed any stars on my minimap, right? Picking some more Tonic Seals of Binding, that's actually good since I need to craft eventually Oleron's Blood and use it on my main weapon, well, on my weapon in general. Yep, so they were actually at the different location than pre than previously I have played.
Alright, so I need to head to the town and do some inventory management. I am typically selling any... This is actually a good amulet. We'll be equipping equipping it. Uh, since we'll, when I will finally have spirit to wear it. So I usually try to sell all the range stuff, all the caster stuff. All the one-handers as well, since I am utilizing two-hander weapon with the force wave, meaning that I am spamming it. Alright, done and done with inventory management. Let's pick up some components and craft materials into common stash and then I will continue on with the main and secondary quests as well. Right, actually... So... I need to change up my equipment. So let's do this. Changing boots with keeping an add on, as well as gloves. And finally, pants. Alright, so on pants I actually right now need to have my anti-venom self as well as on boots it seems like since otherwise I will be lacking on the resistances. So Let's craft anti-venom self. Two of it. Alright, so I actually will remove this component, Mark of the Traveler, and will apply anti-venom self on pants and on boots. So right now I'm in okay-ish state, I will definitely gonna boost up my elemental resistances later on, as well as my anti-venom resistances, but right now the things are the way it is. Alright, so let me teleport back to Bloodgrove. Alright, so I have managed to pick the remains. This means I need to head back to the Order of the Dead's Vigil and complete this quest in order to receive another from them. Do I have some sort of... I, th I thought that I had some sort of a cape behind me. It's just a... The armor lo looks like I have a cape. So this time I need to gather a ethereal essence. I will be heading there as well. Did I manage to collect 
every lore node? Nope, I haven't. Alright, so th let's head straight to... Unfortunately, I cannot teleport from here. Let's head straight to this... place that has ethereal essence in it. Well, first I will activate my waypoint there. Then I'll need to move a little bit further here. And then I'll need to head to the right. Yep, definitely need to head here in this direction let me wait a little bit to my before my hp potion will recharge recharge eventually and then i'll head to the next house i usually tend to destroy this passage it will save you quite a lot of time and will not be that difficult if you just come around from this direction rather if you try to come from the main route since the main route is more difficult to maneuver around due to ethereal ground dynamite is always good Alright, so I'm almost at the point where I will need to face off against a boss of this location. Also, the thing you need to keep in mind if you are if you have chosen an order of the Dead Vigil as your friendly faction, you will need to be careful there, since there will be actually two bosses, not one. One will be the quest. And the other will stand right to the left. So if you can pull one of them and try to kill him first, you can see there's the next one. So separating them is actually a good idea. Overall, this quest boss is not that difficult. Well, for, I should add for a melee casters like this dead knight perhaps for mages and ranged she will be more difficult there's actually an elite right there that's unfortunate since I only want to fight boss can I do it? yep I don't mind that he hit me with this stun but Meteors I definitely had to dodge. Interesting, now Meteors actually falling right behind him. Once again, more Meteors. Alright, so he is dead. Let me quickly check if I am missing some more elites. If not, I will just teleport straightly to the waypoint and continue on. We'll continue on from there. 
seems the only thing that I was missing is dynamite and some green items. In this case, let's teleport actually. And first I'll head down to come across a secret merchant and to check whether or not he has a better weapon for me. And if not, then I'll continue I will continue to head to the bottom of the area. Why I, I will do this? Because I want to collect the legendary item, which once again, like just like in Steps of Torment, has 100% chance to appear there. So, let me check what he has. I already learned this. This I haven't learned yet, so let's buy it and learn it. So, let's check weapons. Nah, actually, it's not worth it for me to buy it. Since it gives bonuses towards savagery, and I do not have the skill on my skill tree at all, so I'm using Force Wave. And I believe even Necromancer does not have savage, Savagery in its skill tree as well. So I need to keep heading further down. So this, what I was talking about, there's a secret passage and a secret location called Shrine of a Forgotten God. Right here you are pr primarily looking for the... the right 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 corner of the map you're looking to eventually go there yep to pick up this shield i think the shield will spawn even on the second difficulty same with the shield in steps of torment Alright, this is actually a very good chest guard, although it has pierce damage. So far, by utilizing the quick method, I think I have saved myself like a couple of hours in terms of how quickly I am making progress in the story. Once again, I am just doing this not because I want to skip all the content, but because on my I have lost my previous previous death night, and on the previous death night I actually cleared every area on 100%. So doing so once again on this character will be for me pointless. However, to quickly reach to the point where I was, that's the other story, as they said. Alright, cle let's clear this lumber mill. So, done it. I actually am able to equip this amulet right now, but... Let's actually move further on into the into the campaign area. Although, well, 
Let's give back some quests first. Again, one wrong waypoint. This is the waypoint that I was looking for. Alright, so... Need to talk to another person to continue their quest line. And right now I need to slay the Chosen guarding the Ashes. That will be actually... Not right here, not at the Dark Quail Gate, but at near the Tomb of Archon, so... It's still a long way, well not long, a decent way to go. So let's keep heading in that direction. Actually one thing that I forgot is I need to report back to Homestead. So the lumber mill is cleared. So no more quest from now for now except the main one This means that I can streak safely go towards the Dark Whale Gate territory Well I believe first I will be heading towards the village of Dark Whale and then towards their gates This is actually a good thing that I keep collecting Tonic Seal of Binding. The other unfortunate thing is, by the looks of it, I will need to target farm a blueprint called... Blueprint called... Mistborn Talisman. Simply because... When I previously played as a Dead Knight, I haven't been able to collect this blueprint. As do, and as far as I understood, this blueprint is dropping from randomly from troll bosses. And even on my like this is I counted as a second playthrough. I still uh, I'm not I still haven't able to find this blueprint. So this is a bummer, because I will not... Well, from my experience, this character actually can live without it, if you know what I mean. But I think it's actually... Well, in the long run, it will hurt me. If not in terms of damage, but in terms of tankiness or vice versa. So perhaps I will do this target farm off stream and but I don't know exactly will I be do well I don't know exactly if I will be do this on stream or off stream Alright, so almost cleared this, this Dark Veil village. By the way, I do not need to... ...kill all of those cultists, I can just keep going. Keep going up until I will hit... Until I will eventually come to the shrine. 
Which once again I will restore. This is the wrong way. So I believe I'm only missing one lore note. Well, the second lore note, I know for sure that it will drop from a boss of this area, which will guard the... entrance towards the next area wait a second I actually can head straight wait can I yep I can straight through this bridge I believe in this location there should be a treasure trove although like I was saying since I'm playing in a quick fashion some treasure trove I will be missing but no biggies right there. I am mostly concerned about exalted stashes and those blueprints, which I haven't been able to find yet. All right, so finally opened my behemoth proc. Let's attach it to Oleron's Rage. Although not to Oleron's Rage, let's actually attach it to Spectral Binding. Alright, so I need to get rid of her. Yep, done and done. So I can safely enter this fort and I can head well I do not believe this location has any secret stashes which are hidden I, I will hover my mouse cursor from time to time just to check any destructible walls Alright, so nothing here. I believe later on you there will be a hidden stash when you eventually will need to came down from the stairs and under it you can destroy a wall. But right now I just Can't find any of it. So I almost at the point where I need to enter another area. Once again, at, uh, where I will fi fight the quote unquote next act boss. I do count them as an egg boss simply because when you face them the music changes dramatically unlike certain other bosses so for me those music serves as an indicator to whether or not you have at the end of some of the act or well, at the beginning of one thing and ending of another thing, let's say it this way. Also, when it comes to Death Knight performance as overall as a class, I do not have 
any complaints when it comes to damage or tankiness clear the speed of how he clears certain mobs the only complaint but that's not that night specific it's just i can say it force wave specific i have is that L and and this is not a big complaint this is just a general remark force wave have a very strange hitbox meaning that if your character will stand on higher ground or on lower ground and if you try to hit something with a force wave more often than not you will find that your force wave will completely miss the target even though by the looks of it you should hit it so that's that that basically one general remark so nothing Nothing to be worried about. Alright. Also do not ignore those lower nodes, even though... Even those who have played this game multiple times will tell you that this... Those lower nodes is a quick and easy way to get a good amount of experience points just by right just by right clicking on it if, like once again even if you had read the lore of this game multiple time multiple times and this is not your first playthrough just by picking some of the lore notes and clicking on it will grant you the same amount of experience as if you were fighting like two or three groups of monsters at the same time I actually am supposed to heading not in this direction, I just am remembering that to the left, I believe, there will be some hidden stash area. But let's check. Nope. Seems like it was in the previous area. Oh well. What can you do? Alright, in this case let me head straight up. Yep, this is what I was talking about, so... Actually... Yep, hidden spoils. So it was on the left side, it just was further down the road. Not at the beginning of this room, but later, later on. All right, so actually this pack is but it is it's a good idea to get rid of this pack and i also got lucky that there's an elite right here all right we are about to face off against a boss of this a an act boss but before we do it let's actually move to the devil's crossing and free up some inventory space since my inventory is almost full i also will change this amulet that i was talk talking about previously i didn't forgot about it Wait a second, what this belt? Hmm. And let's keep my pierce. Don't want this.
Actually, I will sell it. So almost done with inventory management. Let's quickly dispatch all the crafting components as well as regular components to the common stash. Some crystals, crabs. As well as this shield, well, weapon that looked like a shield. Let's pick, pick up this amulet. And let's change it with mine. I do want to keep this add-on. Alrighty then, let's head towards this boss fight. Whoops, clicked on the wrong icon. So this is what I told you about the music. When you were facing off against Warden Creek, as soon as you have entered the room, this music will change. Well, the music will change in general. So almost done with the first phase. And the second phase begin. The most dangerous thing that you need to worry about in second phase is that he from time to time will spawn a red circle around you and it will like this one. So three pools. It did those pools from by the looks of it it will deal chaos damage as well as vitality damage. So avoiding them will be good. So once again one, two, three, and then you can keep on attacking him in all of other regards this boss is not that hard as you just saw so you see what I was talking about lore experience 2000 points just by clicking doing one right click on some lower notes. Now I have stepped onto Astrakhan Road. In this territory I will be completing the other part of the hidden path quest line in order to get access towards Temple of the Three and the final part of the hidden path quest quest line. We have here some weight touched enemies, nothing to worry there. The only thing that I am concerned yep, which doctor. Definitely wasn't able to see him behind all of those monsters. So I will head straightly towards another waypoint. Actually, in order to do so, I need to head towards this road instead. Some chill main ranger tried to catch it with me. Alright, so let's head back to the homestead and report back our... give back our main quest. When it comes to skills, I already 
have soft capped my spectral mining and now I'm heading towards spectral red. Alright. Managed to pick up picked up another main quest. Which basically told me to go to Fort Icon. But first I like I was saying I will be do doing the hidden path quest line. I believe I can go down from these stairs, but let me double check if there is something here. Alright, so let's head down and to the right. So I believe I need to head further down the road. Wasn't supposed to attack those chill mains. Could have just avoided them. This is actually a big fight. Well, it would be easier if I clear those chill main first. Then attack the ethereals. Alright. So I, I am continuing further down the road. This actually try to not miss this area. Simply because there will be an elite right here. There always will be an elite right here. I believe even on the next difficulty. He will be standing here. He is almost done. Yep, dead. I have almost reached, managed to reach another waypoint, I believe. Do be careful of those boars, because uh, be careful mostly of their charge attack, not of their and their stomp attack, not of their regular attack. All right, managed to kill two of them at the same time. Yep, like I was saying, managed to reach the other waypoint. From here on now, I am looking for... Wait a second, I believe that it's actually right here. Let me double check quickly, since I have movement speed to do so. Uh, it's not here. It 
should be around the next bridge area. I am talking about a stone that blocks a passage towards hidden rift. Right, let's head up. Those, those are some interesting sound effects right there. Seems like there's a party going on, which I will definitely try to stop. So, if you ask me, well, from my personal experience, even though some of the... there's actually a path to, towards this hidden passage. So... By the looks of it, it will be from the other side. Alright, so if you ask me, I... From, from my personal experience, I say that even though you'll be facing more of the cultists, at least in the vanilla game, then ethereals where, well, at least 20% more of enemies will be from, from cultists as well as demonic variety. Those ethereals will definitely do more damage rather than cultists. Even though chaos resistance as well as ether resistance are hard to come by, it just from my personal experience, it seems that the cultists are doing and demons doing more damage rather than ethereal monsters. But it just from my personal perspective. All right, all right, so where was I? I was heading towards Devil's Crossing to pick up some stones that required for me rune stones. To complete next part of hidden path so i need whoops wrong button this stone and this stone as well by the way i think i'll not be fighting against russia gun mad queen Simply because previ uh, when I have previously done so, as my previous death knight, the only thing that she, well not, even she didn't give me any of the rare items whatsoever. And the only rare item that I had was from a chest, and that item was a complete trash. So, and I, I have wasted like five, approximately five minutes running around in circles and hitting her. And running back so no point i think at, at least at the first difficulty there is no point in killing her you'll be better off just whoops two elites that's actually a pretty difficult well let's let's see first you'll be better off just killing bismail right here which in any case, you need to uh, you need to kill him to gain access to the final part of hidden pet quest line. But to kill or not to kill Mad Queen or Shalga, it's up to you. To me, on normal difficulty, even with veteran included, it's just a waste of time. Your experience could differ from mine. Be careful around this electric dog. Since this ability and also auto attacks can stun you and reduce your resistances significantly. If possible, try to hit and run her. Otherwise, you should be good to go. Actually, as soon as he... Yep. Now oh, that's bad. She blocks me.
this is actually also bad since I haven't cleared this place of spiders. So almost done with her, I believe. So you see how long it will take to fight Ismail. But you need to keep in mind that she actually gains you something in return, meaning not only the last runestone, which you either way need to open a passage into the Temple of the Tree, but she only gave her some amount of loot. Mad Queen Rashalga, in, in comparison, doesn't give you anything, on normal difficulty at least. And uh, the time it takes to kill Mad Queen, as, especially at this point of the game, for me is just not worth it to even try to do it. Whoops, I think I have ran, yep. No, why the stone? Yep. The stone have just moved up in front of me. Alright, right now I will be heading towards the... I believe next point as well, next waypoint as well as a second shrine. Once again, Chillman Rager try to keep up with my movement speed. He can't. This shrine at the top right corner of the map, you cannot restore just yet. In order for you to have the ability to restore it, you actually need to complete Rover's quest. And you need to collect two of the components, two of the components from the void, from these Ktonic Crypt portals. One of them is in Blood Grove, the other one will be closer towards Necropolis area. Well, and you also need to have a reputation, a level of reputation which allows you to unlock this quest at, at the first place. So this means that I am heading straightly towards waypoint and the next shrine. Does this area have a waypoint? Yep, it does. Definitely can see it now on my minimap. All right. Somehow I have managed to dodge two of those shock waves well force waves however you like to call it completely randomly all right so the next shrine is actually to the left we have two elite boars roaming around here So first I'm gonna clear all of those gravel surrounding, as well as drunk holes enforcers. And let's click to restore it. So 
So I only need two more points to complete Behemoth Constellation. I will actually remove two more points from the crossroad and put it towards Behemoth. For those of you also who are just playing the game for the first time and you do not know about the third area of the hidden path, you can just, by destroying this wall, gather a lore node, which hints where an entrance to the third area is. It does not directly say to you, but it hints to you, well, it guides you pretty closely to it. I see another two elite boars. One of them is deceased, the other is a regenerator. Alright. So far so good. I actually... Well, about Tomb of Korvac, I think I'll be heading towards this direction simply because... Order of the Dead's Vigil will not give you any quest in any quest that will guide you to this tomb, but nevertheless, it's a good idea to visit it simply because at the end you will be facing a ghoul boss, as well as there will be some amount of rare items which you can utilize if just for gold purposes of purposes to earn some gold all right let's continue heading First to the bottom, and then we hook a right. Somehow, once again, I am missing those Void Demons. Good thing that they that they are continuously dropping those Ketonic Seals of Binding. So I believe this is the area which I was talking about when I say that you need to move on the stairs down. And then there should be hidden chest behind the wall. Well, not here it seems. So far, so good. I more than halfway through with this room. With this area. I should add. Soon I will be fighting not the cultists, but ghouls. First, let's clear the left side and then I'll move on down the stairs. Usually on these stairs, well, at least in the previous playthrough, cultists were fighting ghouls. Right now it seems ghouls have won. Yep, so I definitely missed my turn, meaning that I need to go back for this hidden stash a little bit. It was located further to the left. We have a blood letter and harbinger. All right, so hidden stash is cleared of its 
containment inside. This means the only thing that we will have to do here is to kill a boss. And actually at the end there will be another hidden stash. As soon as I kill a boss I will show it to you where, it, where you can find it. So once again, if you have chosen the order of the death vigil, you can use this location simply to pick up some items from hidden stashes. However, if you have picked up the diamonds chosen, then they actually later will give you quest, which will lead you to this location also. And from it, you need to col you will need to be collecting some some sort of an item in order to progress with your completion with your completion of the quest. All right. So manage to defeat this boss. So this is what I was talking about. See, another destructible wall which you can destroy. Actually, there there are there is a chance that as soon as you will enter this room, that in those group of ghosts there will be an elite one. It seems like it will it won't happen right now. But do keep that in mind. Especially when you try to group up as many monsters as possible. And if you haven't been able to defeat this boss just yet. Alright, leveled up once more. So on the next level I can finally start leveling Spectral Red. Well, I think it's a good idea to head back to town and clear my inventory. Since I only left with one slot and I want to... Well, next thing I want to do is to... Before I move on with the main quest and secondary... Is to clear the hidden path quest line with the entrance with the Temple of the Tree. Alright. Let's see if we have something interesting. So far, I do not see any interesting items. And by interesting, I just mean the ones that I want to wear on me. I have managed to find a better axe. Well, by the looks of it, at least in terms of damage even though it's an yellow X. Let's actually see if another vendor has anything to offer. In comparison it seems like he has although vitality and meter damage and why does it show that it will give me plus 1000 damage per second? If my main damage types are physical and internal trauma. I think I will stick to... Whoops. This axe instead. Yep, let's buy it. This I will sell, for sure. And let's change it with mine. 
Let's keep an add-on and reapply it on this new axe. Alright, so let me head to my stash and dump every crafting and regular material in it. As well as those... Well, actually not. Nah, I'll keep those runestones with me. Since they will disappear as soon as I will... Came close towards the entrance to the Temple of the Tree. Alright, so... This would be actually it for today. So, I would like to thank everyone whether you have watched my videos or whether you have tuned in on the stream recently or have watched it from the beginning nevertheless thank you for your attention and also i would like to add that if you have missed my part one of this new series you can check it out whether on twitch on video on demand or on youtube on my youtube channel the link on it will be in description and as far as the next grim dawn stream it will actually be on saturday to be more if to be more precise you can check the schedule whether uh it you can check it on twitter facebook on twitch page or on youtube in the discussion on my channel nevertheless once again, I would like to say thank you and I will see you all guys in the next stream. So good luck everyone.